whenever atoms combine to form molecules, they form bonds between those individual molecules. Now, what exactly is a bond and how does a bond actually form? Well, basically, the electron probability densities of the outermost valence electrons of those atoms combine or overlap, and that's how a bond is formed. Now, as a result of that overlap of electron clouds, the amount of space in which the electron can be found at any given moment in time increases, and because our electrons can now occupy more space, space by Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, we know that if the volume increases, our energy will decrease, and so the electrons in the molecule are lower in energy, and therefore are more stable than the electrons in the individual atoms. And that's exactly why molecules form in the first place, because molecules are generally more stable and lower in energy as compared to their constituent atoms. Now recall that in atoms, electrons are able to undergo electron transitions under proper conditions. Now in the same way, our electrons can also undergo transitions in energy in molecules. So even though the energy of the outer electrons of our molecules changes, these electrons can still undergo energy level transitions as they did inside atoms. So basically, if we allow a photon of light to hit that electron with just the right frequency, that electron can jump to a higher or excited energy state. And when the electron returns to the ground state from the excited state, it will release a certain photon of light that carries a certain frequency. In fact, we can observe all these different transitions and this entire transitions or all these transitions for any specific molecule can be observed on a line spectrum known as the band spectrum. So, just like an atom can have a unique line spectrum for the emission of photons when our electrons go from excited to ground state, our molecules can also undergo these transitions and so we also have the unique emission line spectrum that we call the band spectrum. And this band spectrum is unique to that specific molecule and so we can use the band spectrum to actually actually identify what the molecule is. Now, what exactly is the difference between atomic transitions and molecular electric transitions, electron transitions? So unlike atoms, the energy levels that electrons can actually take in molecules increases drastically because molecules, unlike atoms, can actually vibrate and rotate. So to see exactly how the the vibrational and rotational motion of the molecules changes or increases the number of electronic transitions, let's compare the following two graphs. To, uh, the following two graphs. So this graph contains our energy y-axis. This graph also contains our energy y-axis. Now this graph is for the individual atom. Let's suppose our atom is given by x. And this is our diatomic molecule version of this atom given by x2. So we have some covalent bond between our two x atoms. So basically, let's suppose our electron transitions from the excited 4s state to our ground 3s state. So we know because we have an individual atom, only one such transition is actually possible. And, and on our film or on our viewing screen, we're only going to see one line on that line spectrum. Now, if we examine our diatomic molecule as a result of the vibrational and rotational motion of our 
our diatomic molecule, we're going to have many splits take place. So we're going to have many different possibilities for our electron transition. And that means when we view the film or the, or the viewing screen, we're going to have a lot of lines form. So basically, if we use quantum mechanics, we can explain what is taking place. So the nuclei and the electrons of the molecules are not exactly stationary. In fact, they are always in constant motion. Now, these fluctuations of the electron and proton's probability densities, because they constantly fluctuate, that means that the energy of the protons or electrons will change. So basically, we have vibrational and rotational motion within our molecules. So let's, for example, take the diatomic H atom. So we have one proton in this nucleus, one proton in this nucleus, and we have basically the combined overlap of the electron densities of our two electrons as shown by this blue region. And it basically fluctuates constantly as a result of a attraction and repulsion electric forces between the positive and the negative charge and this is known as vibrational motion. Now if we apply the classical theory for our diatomic H molecule we can easily see how it will undergo rotational motion. So if the rotational axis is coming out of the board our molecule can actually rotate. So we can use classical mechanics to analyze the rotational motion of our molecules about some fixed axis. So basically, just like atoms, just like the electrons in atoms can undergo electronic transitions, our electrons in molecules can also undergo electronic transitions. But now, we have many more possible energy states as a result of vibrational and rotational motion of our molecule.